Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the machine learning tool Optuna, which is a hyperparameter optimization framework, which is just a simple way of saying it's a way to find the optimal hyperparameters for training a model. Um, this tool is pretty uh, well respected in the community of AI and ML. A lot of people do utilize it. Um, it's actually a pretty powerful tool as well. Um, I've come to like it a lot and it's one of the tools that I use the most uh, in my day-to-day -day and whenever I'm trying to figure out uh, the best params to solve a problem. Um, but this is kind of a notebook that I put together. This is based off of their example. However, I use Optuna in a slightly different way than the developers intend for you to use it. Uh, a lot of the examples that they provide actually have the code for the train inside of the objective function. Um, I'm more of a bigger fan of splitting the two, and there, I'll explain some of the reasons why when we get into it. Um, but first, let's go ahead and dive right in. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and get our imports in. Um, I already have an environment uh, that I've set up, uh, but this is all sklearn specific, but you can apply this to other models as well, or other uh, packages like PyTorch and whatnot. They have some examples on the Optuna website for how to use Optuna. Now this tutorial assumes that you have already installed this into a environment. If you are not familiar with how to set up an environment, um, I will have a video out that out on that at some point. Um, but I know there are some videos out on the internet to kind of help you with that. I recommend looking into Anaconda for that if you can. Um, but first things first, um, we're going to get our data. We're going to load our data from sklearn, take one of their uh, famous iris data sets, and then we're going to take x and y here. So we have our data and our target, um, or our labels. So we have our data and our labels, and then we have our params and our params here. Um, for this in particular, we're going to use a random forest classifier to actually identify uh, the difference between um, these flowers, the iris of these flowers. So here we have the max depth, the uh, n, the number of estimators um, that's going to be used in this model. Um, the minimum samples of leaves that we're going to run into, and I will be able to kind of show you where these are getting placed into the model. Um, and just so you're aware, uh, this is only for our sake um, and this example sake. In a normal AI and ML situation, you're going to want to use something to actually take in your parameters so they're reproducible. Um, in this case, let's say that I wanted to make sure that I have a, uh, an input of a certain thing. I would use a CLI to actually take in params or use some sort of configuration um, to pass in and then have some logic to determine what is being passed into the objective function, which we'll get there to what that actually is. Um, so once you've gotten your params, uh, well, you've prepared the data, you've gotten your params. Now, one of the unique things that happens with Optuna is the utilization of an objective function. An objective function is, in plain terms, is the function that determines what params to try. And that is the whole point of this objective function. It's to establish the objective. The return of this function should actually be what you're trying to optimize. So in the way that I've actually set this up, so let's say that I'm using Optuna. Um, if I'm using Optuna in a typical setting, uh, what I would want to do is to set the params and 
obviously this is an example, so I would not go ahead and just, you know, put these right out here, but what I would do is identify what I would like to change. Um, so for example, max depth, uh, number of estimators, the minimum samples, samples uh, leaf, and then the criterion are all four params that I've selected that I feel like I would like to investigate. So to investigate on all of these, you can actually do um, a grid search over all of these combinations. So Optuna, the unique thing about Optuna is it has what's called a sampler. And these samplers are designed to help you find the optimal hyperparams. So you can imagine there's this giant tree of combinations. And what you want to do is to minimize the amount of combinations that you have to deal with. Well, these samplers will take extreme uh, like versions of statistical math to determine, hey, you know, this is not going to fly. Like these nodes aren't going to work. Um, so it's not worth trying these params. So what Optuna will do is kick in and use those samplers and apply it to finding the best combinations using statistical means. And what happens here is if I set 32 as a max, but we've already tried two and we've noticed really good results for the max depth, well, Optuna is going to take a look at that and zone in on the max depth. So you'll notice whenever we run this that it's going to focus in on max depth the number of estimators, and uh, the minimum number of uh, samples to leaf. Um, and then it'll try out different criterions based off of what I've given it. So in this case, we have an objective function. And this, by default, you have to have a trial. So you set the trial. And then for me, I put in a param for params. This is typically what I do to address, uh, this is to imitate kind of a CLI where it's kind of in a dictionary form. But you would get your CLI here and then you would have your params per each and then you would return whatever is the output of your train, which should be your um, actual best results. Um, so in this case, in our train function, we take in params and we return the accuracy. So I use Optuna as kind of a layer um, on top of my training script, um, well, really inside of my training script that can be activated or deactivated given some logic. Um, so here, if I wanted to pass in um, all of these, as uh, params, um, what I would do is I would set these to suggest based off of the trial. So in this case, in this objective function, we have the trial. And for max depth, we did trial.suggest underscore int. And Optuna has other ways of doing that too. It has uh, suggest int, suggest float, suggest categorical. It has some other ones too that you can look into in uh, the documentation, but these are uh, some of the core ones that I actually use is int, float, and categorical. And in this case, I just use two and 32 as the numbers just because that's what um, they were using for the max depth, I believe, in the example. But I wanted to show you guys kind of how um, it works and that even with you know, random numbers here that it's going to select, it's going to narrow in on a best. So in this case, we have our train function, which uh, typically you want to have some sort of train function whenever you're building out scripts, uh, just so you have all your code in one place and uh, users can just call a train function somewhere. Um, and here we just have our model that we load in and then we actually give it the params that are passed in. 
So you can see that the params are passed in here and that it's passed through this Optuna objective function, which kind of drives where the params are going to go. And then it's passed into the train. And then this train then takes the model. And that model is then trained. And from there, you will be able to take that accuracy and it will be passed back in whenever you run uh, the, the train again, or you test against the objective function. So one of the things that I was going to do was kind of show you what they ended up doing for their example. Yep, here it is. This is what they did in one go. It's kind of hard to see, actually. Um, let me zoom in some so you guys can see it. Uh, but this is what they ended up doing, was putting everything in one objective function. And you'll see why I kind of like doing the other uh, way around. But So we'll go ahead and take a look at this. But basically, uh, if I run all now, this is the same deal that they were doing. So I have a function, and I apply a lambda to the trial for the objective and the trial, or the trial and the params for the objective. And then we have our study. We create a study in Optuna, and that is what will allow us to test our params. And then we optimize, and this will kick off the actual study. And then I just wanted to print the best trial from the study. So if I go ahead and I save what we have here, and I do run all, you'll notice that it will go through all the trials. So I set it to do 10, and it has the frozen trial, and it tells you exactly what values it had. It gives you a timestamp. And you can see some of the params that were used. And these were the optimal params that it found just in those trials. But you can see that this was something that um, was really easy to do. It didn't take much code. Um, in fact, I can increase the amount of trials. So we're going to do 50 instead. And we'll just kind of let that run. And you'll see that it's going to keep on going. Um, it found the most optimal, and it was able to get an accuracy of 0.97 for this uh, this, this tree. Um, and what we end up doing is getting a timestamp and all of the params that were used in actually accomplishing this task. Uh, that's another perk, is that you can just use the dictionary, and it will tell you exactly uh, what you need and how you got the params. Um, and this all coincides with other tools like MLflow, um, which MLflow is really easy to use with Optuna. It's got some built-in functionality. But I think that's really it for this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.